Uh, the idea for Strange World came, um, you know, probably four, five years ago. Um, and, and thinking about what my next film was going to be um, and what was top of mind um, at that moment was I was thinking about my kids and what kind of world they're going to inherit when they're older and, and it, what kind of world I inherited from my father. Um, and in terms of the environment. So, you know, wanted to set out to tell an environmental story, but obviously wanted to do it uh, in, a, in, a, in a fun way and, and sort of profiled those adventure stories that I loved as a kid and still love as an adult, which, uh, you know, those adventure stories where a group of explorers find a hidden world. It just felt like it was ripe for uh, originality and, and imagination and, and that could only be provided by, you know, Disney animation. Um, so that's kind of where it started, this idea of, you know, legacy and, and fathers, sons, and grandsons. Speaking of the characters in Strange World, the three male leads are Jaeger Clade, Serger Clade, and uh, Ethan Clade. Uh, you know, uh, it's Jaeger's like the, you know, in our world, the, the Michael Jordan of Explorers, the, probably the most significant celebrity uh, of, of Avalonia. And his, his kind of motivating factor is to go out and explore and to pull off uh, something that's completely impossible in the world of Avalonia, which is to get past these impassable mountains that uh, encircle uh, their, their, their world of Avalonia. Uh, and that has been his lifelong dream. But because of that, his son, our main character, Searcher, his kind of reaction to the obsessiveness of his father and never being able to be tethered into one place is to kind of be the opposite of him. He wants to be, he became a farmer. So instead of a man who's rootless, he wanted to build roots. So his main uh, drive has been to like, you know, you know, uh, you know, create a legacy that 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 that's stable for his son, uh, Ethan, that uh, Ethan can one day inherit this farm and, and feel the safety of, you know, his dad always being there. But the thing is, you know, you know, as we all know, as fathers, you know, you, just because you intend something doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. And 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 Ethan is also a re restless spirit. He's he's a bit Jaeger. He's a bit searcher. He's a sensitive searcher, but he has the same ambitions as his grandfather. And I think that that is going to be a nice push and pull between, uh, you know, these two men when it comes to how Ethan figures himself out throughout the journey of Strange World. I, I mean, I think honestly, I think for for what's so nice about. Uh, uh, what's so relatable about Jaeger, Searcher, and Ethan is I think all of us as individuals have a little bit of each of those characters in us. We all have, we're all ambitious like Jaeger. We all care about our families like Searcher, but we're also restless. We're also people still searching for answers and 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 figuring ourselves throughout our lives like Ethan. And I think that they're, they're, that that's what makes writing these three characters and, and making them in this movie so uh, delightful and also just a great thing to explore just emotionally as you, you you, you bring them to life. You know, I love stories about fathers and sons. Um, it's something that I've loved uh, since I was a, a lad. And for me, I had an incredibly strong father. Uh, he was a loving father, but he was also a very strict father. And I have to say, uh, when I first heard the story of Strange World, I was hooked because uh, the Jaeger searcher relationship actually seemed pretty uh, relatable to me, and I think it's I think it's relatable and universal to audiences around the world, because that father son dynamic is obviously one of the biggest things that happens in any kind of relationship uh, as you're growing up. A lot of the inspirations for the story kind of came from this idea of pulp and pulp magazines and uh which were popular you know turn of the century probably up through the 30s and um they they kind of gave way to comic books as well they were sort of the precursors to comic books i would say um and they were just stories of adventure you know in far-flung places um and uh you know i i thought they were very interesting it was the inspirational or inspiration for like Raiders of the Lost Ark and even Star Wars to some degree. Um, but that wasn't the only influence uh, for Strange World. You know, I also looked at early adventure novels from like Jules Verne, uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Edgar Rice Burroughs, you know, that, that, that late 1800s, early 1900s, which saw sort of the birth of the modern adventure story. Um, the inspiration from those authors also runs through Strange World, as well as, you know, cinematic uh, influences like 
you know, Spielberg's, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark and, and Star Wars and King Kong. Even. Uh, I think Des Quaid was a perfect uh, ca- piece of casting for Yeyer Clay. He is the, uh, the the biggest celebrity of uh, of the world of Avalonia. And I think having an actor who's had 40 years of experience being in Hollywood, uh, like it, literally he's been in f- films that Don would often reference while making the, the, the film before we even casted him. Uh, was super helpful because he was able to imbue his character with, 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 with you know, as big as it was, this, this, this big bolster spirit uh, that made him super fun. But also, there's moments in this film that's super touching and very real uh, that uh, that Dennis was able to imbue with like some some real heart and humanity uh, through his own experiences. That I think that that is the magic of Yeager Clay. He is one of the funniest characters that that, that I've been able had a chance to to write, but also one of the most moving. Uh, and that's that's not always the case when you have someone that big and so that it was so great to have uh, Dennis Quaid be the heart and soul of that character. Ethan Clade is a terrific character and he really is the I think foundation of the upcoming Clade family right he um, has an amazing relationship with his father he and his father love one another very much but Ethan has dreams maybe a little bit beyond his dad. His dad is really a uh, wants to, wants him to take over the farm. He wants him to be a farmer, and that's the legacy he wants to leave to his son. But somehow Ethan has dreams of maybe something a little more, and that's what he needs to find uh, through the film. Jabuki was the perfect Ethan for us. Um, when he came in, his ability to A, act, and then B, improv, it's so important for our process. Uh, you know, we, we are a collaborative art form uh, and we are an iterative art form. And so when someone comes in like Jabuki and is able to, you know, riff on like a jazz musician on what we've done, it really makes it fun for us because it expands our story. And he was just um, so committed and so part of our creation. Uh, Searcher Clade is our main, the main character, our protagonist in Strange World. Um, he is the son of the most famous explorer of all time, um, the celebrity explorer named Jaeger Clade. And Jaeger was, uh, you know, uh, expecting Searcher to follow in his footsteps and be an explorer. Uh, uh, Searcher had other ideas um, and kind of, you know, lived uh, a life or, or became an adult and lived his life almost in contrast to his father, where his father was this rootless wanderer. Um, Searcher decided to, you know, put down roots and, and be a farmer and raise his son uh, with the expectation that his son would take over this farm someday. Um, he is a very affable uh, character, um, hardworking, but also just very genuine and uh, loving, loving to his wife, loving to his son, loving to his farm, you know, and, and he's a man who, you know, who grows things. He knows how to nurture, not, you know, not just his Pando farm, but also a family. And so, um, and he was, he was beautifully voiced by Jake Gyllenhaal, who embodied all of those things. and. And, uh, you know, and, and to be perfectly honest, it's also, you know, being the son of a farmer, uh, there's a lot of aspects of my dad that are in Searcher. You know, um, there's sort of a quiet strength that runs through Searcher. He's not a, a, he's not a, a, a braggart or a, a bigger, you know, like Jaeger, who's, you know, who, who can, uh, you know, he, he is, uh, he's very full of himself at times in a very fun way. And there's a lot of braggadocio with Jaeger, which Searcher does not have. He's much more humble. Um, and uh, yeah, he's, an, he's a character that's near and dear to my heart. Well, Jake was the perfect uh, uh, choice to, to, you know, to voice our Searcher Clay. I mean, for so many reasons. One, the first being uh, his level, Jake's level investment in the story. Like from our first meeting, which was supposed to be an hour and lasted two and a half. Um, there was just such an ease that we had with Jake, even though we had just met him. And, um, you know, it was very evident to, to us 
you know, even from that first meeting, that he loved this story, loved the potential of this story as much as we did. And so um, you cannot ask for anything more than that as a director, you know, to, for, for your lead actor. And, you know, um, Jake's a very busy individual, <laughs> um, but he gave us so much of his time uh, graciously because he loves this story. And I think he loves this character. And he was able to put so much nuance in Searcher. Uh, again, Searcher's not a, you know, big over the top character like like Jaeger is, you know, he's he's much more grounded and, and, and uh, but Jake was able to do that in a very fun way and also be hysterical. I mean, there's, there's you know, Searcher, there's a lot of moments where Searcher's very much out of his uh, comfort zone and, and Jake was able to uh, perform that uh, in a very, very entertaining way. Uh, Callisto Mall is the leader of Avalonia. She is uh, the like a former explorer like Jaeger. She has a history with Searcher as she was on the expedition that uh, Searcher was on when he discovers Pando. Uh, and she's the one that when it comes to the story, she's the one who ends up uh, knocking on Searcher's door to, to enlist him on the mission to go into strange world to save the world uh she's uh brave she's boisterous she's really cool uh lucy lou is uh i mean for, for, first and foremost i i'm a huge fan of lucy i i i, I you know she's a hero of mine that I, i've been following her career for quite a long time to have her on this film is truly a dream come true to be able to work with her uh but you know you needed someone uh, for Callisto that, that was believable to be both a leader, adventurer, and also funny. Like she, she had, she carried a lot of different things in the film. Uh, and I think that she, she's, she's quite a scene stiller when she's in the film, uh, as you'll see, uh, with her and Meridian and, and that relationship between those two women are, are is one of the, the, the greatest, uh, surprises that, that kind of emerged throughout making this movie that, that we're very proud of having in this film. Uh, and I think that, that she was, uh, that Lucy was, uh, not just a great actor, uh, playing this role, but she was, you know, just a great leader of, you know, of, of the, the film itself. She, she's a great you know advocate for uh this film so i'd love having her on it meridian is the mother in our story she's married to searcher clade and uh is the mother to ethan and that relationship is really special uh they really have the ability to talk and talk truth um, I think when you're the son of a father who has plans for you, sometimes you use mom as the sounding board for your own thoughts. And that's exactly how Ethan uses a Meridian. Uh, and the love between them is really something special. Gabrielle Union is so incredibly strong, both as an actress uh, and as a comedian. And she brought so much to the role, both from an improv standpoint and from an acting standpoint. Um, her, uh, her Meridian is just delightful. And you really, really understand why Searcher fell in love with this woman. And she's also an amazing pilot and uh, in the long run is one of the heroes of our story. Well, um, in, uh, in, in our world of Avalonia, uh, which, which is the name of our world in Strange World, um, the, the entire world is powered by this plant called Pando. It was discovered by Searcher on an expedition when he was uh, a teenager and he brought it back. And it became this transformational uh, plant that, that transformed Avalonia from kind of a horse and buggy type uh, um, city and civilization into, you know, giant tall buildings and airships, you know, and people get around by airships. So, you know, within Searcher's lifetime, you know, it has transformed and he's sort of the father of it. You know, he's called the father of Pando. Um, he chooses to to remain a humble farmer because that's what he loves is growing this plant and, and working on his farm. Well, um, plants around Avalonia, Pando plants start, start dying and uh, they don't know why. And so Callisto, President Callisto Mall, uh, enlist searcher to help her go underground to follow the roots of Pando to get to what's what's ailing it what's what's hurting it and that starts the mission um, Ethan uh, legend and Meridian um, uh, I won't go into details but uh, they end up they end up getting uh, 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 involved in the mission as well through a series of uh, 
circumstances. Uh, and so suddenly the whole family is on this adventure uh, underneath um, the, the world of Avalonia into this really strange world.